Good morning. Good morning. Honored to be with you as always, and uh, let me just uh, pay tribute, if I could, as we start today's news conference, to former Governor Norman Bangader, uh, our 13th governor, a great leader who took over the responsibility of governor of this state during some very difficult times. Uh, elected in 1984, I'm not sure we all remember that mortgage interest rates, for example, at that time were over 16 percent. Today it's less than four. Prime rate money was costing us 22 to 22 and a half percent. The economy was in a very difficult situation at that time and when he inherited the opportunity to take over that responsibility as governor. Uh, he was a good leader, uh, maybe a great leader, because of his approach at, at difficult times. He didn't wonder where he stood. Uh, he was a no-nonsense, kind of a straightforward, roll up your sleeves and get the job done governor. And it was probably the kind of governor we needed to have during those difficult times. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, Governor Bangor as a private sector citizen and my own business responsibilities as a real estate broker and developer. Uh, lobbying for private property rights and the small business. And uh, I remember uh, talking to him about what can we do, in fact, to, to get the economy turned around. Uh, he certainly understood the importance of education and did what he needed to do, he thought, to, in fact, improve educational opportunities and help the economy. Um, we also happened to have the opportunity myself to be a leader in the realtor organization at the time, and we hosted the first debate between uh, Governor Bangader and Ted Wilson and Merrill Cook in 1988. And uh, to be able to witness that, uh, again, as most of you remember, he was down in the polls by about 30 points. <coughs> and that was the beginning of his resurgence. And as we all know, uh, he ended up winning that election by just a very small margin. But that was the beginning. I watched that evolution take place as he went out and took his message to the people of Utah and said, I'm the right guy at the right time to continue to lead this state. Uh, I've appreciated my relationship with him not only as a private citizen but then later as a county commissioner uh, talking about local government issues and where the rubber really meets the road. When I was lieutenant governor uh, he used to contact me and call me all the time and uh, had suggestions, had questions and I appreciated those opportunities I had to receive his counsel and talk about issues of the day as he clearly was uh, observing and, and, and participating in what was taking place in the marketplace of politics. And uh, as governor, he's uh, been a good confidant, and uh, I've drawn upon his uh, experience and his wisdom and his counsel and my own responsibilities as governor this past five and a half years. He was with me just a, a, a few weeks ago uh, as he stopped in at the tail end of the legislative session and wanted to talk about what are we going to do if we move the prison with that land that's available there and counseled me to make sure we don't do anything in haste. There's a long-term opportunity there if we move the prison. We ought to be very methodical and careful about how we in fact, in fact decide to develop that property. And then as of last Thursday, uh, just a week ago, I uh, had the opportunity to have him at the mansion and he spoke to our uh, honorary colonels group and many legislators that were there and again recounted his days as being governor and, and the challenges he faced and how he tried to address them. He gave us some insight. Uh, talked about the pumps that have been so uh, well uh, not noticed and talked about that was a, a decision that came in the previous administration as far as the design. Something I didn't know about but he said something that, he, that I resonated, and that is, you don't want to blame the previous administration for the problems you inherit today. That was a good principle. He always took on the responsibility uh, himself and did not blame others for the circumstances that he found himself in. I think that's good counsel for all of us in politics. Uh, again, my parting comments that night where I've appreciated our association, Norm. Uh, you've been a good friend, a good mentor, and you've given me some great counsel. I want you to feel comfortable in calling me continually as you see issues out there that you want to weigh in on. He promised me he would. So it was with some shock. That I got the call this past Tuesday of a man that I have great admiration for, 
who I thought was very healthy and full of life and the vigor and the wisdom that comes with age and experience that had had a massive stroke and, and then passed away. We've lost a great leader here in the state. And we as the people of Utah uh, should show gratitude for his leadership, for his service. And we certainly wish the Banger family well and our condolences in this difficult time for their family. But hopefully they'll be buoyed up in, in the fact that he was a great governor, a great leader who did a lot of good things for our state and has helped put us on the track where today we see significant positive results. And I attribute a lot of that to the leaders of the past, including Norm Bangeter. He will be missed.